white British country boy who's proficient in Jamaican patois. With there, Kingston. And a freestyle dancehall DJ. Radam! No boy can't take man for Alan and no Nick Cannon. Earned him mainstream celebrity status in the UK and beyond. He goes by the name M.R. And he's right now, right here, on this stage. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure. Wow, welcome. How did you acquire this level of command uh, of Jamaican Patois? I just think the love. Yes. Is just, that's the main thing. It's just the love. When you love something yes. so much, yes. you know, it's inevitable that if you, if, if you love something and you work towards something that you love, mm -hmm. you're just going to grow and grow and grow. And, because you know, we, I can definitely sit here and talk in, in my English accent, but when the man them sing a pioneer award, they're a different thing. <laughs> what got you first? Right, so. The music or the, or the, or the chat? Right, so when I was very, very young, um, my elder, elder sister, who's, who's quite a bit older than me, she was uh, in a relationship with somebody from Jamaica in England. Yes. So our family was always around, um, you know, when I was young, when I was like, I mean, like nine, ten. Uh, we'd, we'd have Christmas at our house and then we'd go to like my sister's partner's family. Yes. And uh, everyone was Jamaican, so I used to like steal their lyrics and just take them back and just kind of, like, like use part of it and then change a little part of it and add my little part to it. So even when I really, really started, started, you know, DJing, it was, it was my brother-in-law's I was kind of stealing the lyrics from. So that's where, where, where the influence was straight away, right from when I was like nine, 10. So when you met them, um, you were an aspiring artist already or? Or what? The, the, the family? in music at that mm. time? Yeah? I was just cut, like, kind of started. If anything, they gave me the influence okay. to, to start. So you were triggered by the, the sound of right. dance or music? 100%, because that, that, that time there in England, uh, drum and bass and jungle music was very, very popular. And that was uh, heavily influenced with, with, okay. with, with dance or music at the time. So it was already in the kind of culture that, that was happening at that time. A lot of Jamaicans in England, so a lot of my friends were Jamaican same way. And, uh, you know, growing up, we were just doing music and I was just trying to make a way. And I, the amount of times I, I, I flew to Jamaica, just on like a, just a hope that um, something was going to happen for me. Not knowing what I was doing, not really having any connections, but just the love for it. And I just, I just continued and continued to do it. And then one day I was just sitting down and I had a one song. And I think it was the first time I got like a little bit of money for a dub plate. Mm -hmm. And I got excited, like, oh, I can make some money from a dub plate. So I thought, I ain't even making no money from music at this, at this point. And, uh, and I remember I'd done a video and sang the lyrics, 100 gal, 100 gal, but I even had a song with Gullibop. I was sitting there watching this show, watching him talk about the interview, but he couldn't even remember my name. I thought, <laughs> but I saw it go. Oh, yeah, yeah, I collab, so, <laughs> I collab with Gullibop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember him talking about that. I, 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 could, I could relate to who he was. You were talking about right. it. Right, so this, yeah. and this is like, this is a good, yeah, it was at least <laughs> the past five years ago. So then times there again, I'm just finding my way. And, and like I said, I didn't realize this, this freestyle that I'd done at the time was raw. Yes. And the way it come across was raw. And uh, it was actually one of these type of, in England, you have these, uh, these TV shows and it's like, um, and you have these guys on there in there. Sweet boys, they call him in, in, in London. They're not really from the roads. They're more, you know, they're more gallus. Mm -hmm. And he, this guy, this white guy is just taking it and actually like, take the mickey out of it. I wouldn't say in a bad, well, it wasn't a bad light, mm -hmm. but he's posted as a kind of joke. Like, look at this white guy. That's where it started. You made a joke of you doing it. Right. And? and it was depressing at the time because I'd been doing music and yes. I'd been doing stuff and it, 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 for that time I was like, like I, I am a reggae and dance sort of artist, like that's what I do and I'm, I'm sitting here now and I'm getting millions of views and there's people laughing mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't like this and it depressed me. I felt like, I, what, what do I do now? Do I not be who I am anyway okay. and change because these people are laughing at me? Mm -hmm. And the blessing was, three days after that happened, I flew to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And 
I started getting to recognise a little bit, but you know, not on a massive scale. And I, and I, and I, and I went on TVJ, on Sunrise TVJ. Mm -hmm. and there was three artists, and you, you, you know, and, and I won. I won the competition. Yeah. That gave me a good, for myself, not what anyone else was looking at it, but that for me, that gave me a strength. I said, you know what? Jamaican people are on my side, and this is the music that I'm doing, so I don't care who's laughing at me in England. Okay. I'm, I'm happy, I'm, I'm content. So at that time, you had a lot, a lot of big, big, big channels in, in, in England, uh, Unilad Sound, and they, you know, they had millions and millions of views, and they was contacting me, they wanted this freestyle from me, and because I didn't like it, I wouldn't give it to them. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of like holding it. So I flew back from Jamaica after a couple of weeks, with a, with a more of a energy like, right, no, I can do this, I don't care. Like, and, and at that time, a few things started happening in between that, like contacts from DJs from BBC One Extra, and a couple of the bridges say, no, you're boss, brother, mm. you're boss. And I don't feel like that. So it's certain, certain things are making me feel a little bit better about the situation. So I got back and I said, right, message the people said, I'm ready. You want it? I'll send it to you. Sent them it, half hour later, boom, taken down, copyright. All right, no problem. I said, I'll give you the next one right now. Mm. <laughs> put, the, put the camera there, just stood back, done it, sent it to them. I said, listen, you, if you want it, you better take it because I'm going to post it. Yeah. And them times they are, I'm getting views because everybody's looking at me at that time. Mm. I give it to them, two million views, three million views, four million views, five million views. I think it, I'll just watch that one post alone go up to like eight million views. And that's when people started getting involved and the dance or industry in the UK started recognising and maybe across the borders a little bit. And um, off the back of that, when I was going viral from that, there's a platform in the UK called Black Box, which is kind of like, that's where all the big artists kind of start on. And I, that's when I done this sound, which I created, which was the UK music drill, the drill beat. And I took patois and my energy and I created a sound on that moment that, that wow. Mm -hmm. When that dropped, 20 million plus. Every big site in the UK, it was there. And that's what really, like, when I went out on the road, it's people melody. recognized me. Your, your career. Right, right. Now I get my blue tick on Instagram and loads of, low thousands of followers. And, and that's where it really, and then from there, you know, BBC One Extra Freestyles and, Anything I was touching from that freestyle with this certain sound hit. And uh, it was just going really well. But the problem was, Winfred, I wanted to fit in as an authentic dancehall artist. Oh, hold a sec right there. Let's take a piece of that, that track, that piece that you did that exploded. Come on, I laugh after them, none of laugh after them, none of them job I'd like me. So that's it, a freestyle done by the BBC Extra, one right. extra, right? What did that do for your confidence now? And do you, yeah, did you I mean, declare, yes, I'm here to stay at that point? At that point, I knew it's going to be greatness. It's okay. going to be greatness. And I knew I'd finally, finally got a little bit where I need to be going. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but the problem was I really wanted to, I was trying to fit in too much and be a dancehall artist and all, I wanted to sound authentic Jamaican. Yes. Yeah, that more I sound like a real Jamaican, but my style is not that. And I spent a few years wasting time, to be honest. I, you know, I'm not saying I'm a versatile artist and I can do any rhythm, mm -hmm. anything. But what I'm, you know, the strong point is that style there with the drill beat and the, the English energy and the patois all blended into one. And uh, it weren't until the beginning of this year where I said, all right, I have to stick on this sound. And hopefully Jamaica accepts this sound rather than me trying to fit in because this is what's making me blow. This is what the rest of the world loves. Mm -hmm. And I know Jamaica loves it, but I, don't, I haven't really tested the waters. And uh, w when I'd done a recent, the recent one, Radam, mm -hmm. when I posted that, Popcorn reposted it, but not just once, like a good few times. Yeah? Yeah. This is the man, love it tune. So then from there, he invited me to his album launch in London, and uh, he showed 
a lot of love and respect. So it was really nice to get that appreciation and that respect from Pop Khan. You know, we don't need to talk. <laughs> I think, you know, who Pop Khan is, so that was amazing for me. And then just before I was uh, on this trip, I messaged him. I said, Pop, you know, I'm going to follow Jamaica next week. And he said, I'm there at your place. I've got a show tomorrow. Follow and bon off peace I show. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, all right. So I went down there and I, I was presuming that I usually worked in the UK. This was in London. Bristol. Bristol, yes. Usually how it works, the, the up and coming artists or whatever, they would perform first. Mm -hmm. And then kind of like the show closed a little five minutes and then the main act pop kind of followed and that's it. No, he brought me out on set. Mm. Big up the unruly God every time, isn't he? And the me. response you got? Oh, it's crazy, you know, because I think, you know, UK knows me. Mm -hmm. So you got to think, you know, at this point, when I turn up, when I'm walking through the crowd to go on stage and I stand on that stage and he brings me out, they know me. They're my people. I'm like, they're, they're so happy to see me on stage. It's mad. They're just, ah, it was mad because they, they know. And at that point, you know, people have seen me grow and they know what it is. Um, but for Jamaica, it's definitely done something. We're, we're, we're just continuously going viral and these things all put together. Since I've been in Jamaica, I don't think I've been to an area where I haven't been recognized yet. Ah, uh, in Jamaica? Yeah. Okay. What about Jamaicans in the UK? They love me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a, we got a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Any area I go that is a Jamaican predominant area, that's my place. So the, the argument that, you know, white people are taking the music and all over the music and they're taking over reggae and dance or right how do you, do you get that i understand of course you can't you can't you can't you can't um you know but i would like to say and you know, people might think i sound ignorant or they might say oh but everybody says that i was like, i mean i different you mr williams and i different you because not only do the music it's a separate conversation we have i also run a youtube channel where i teach people how to cook jamaican food Mm. And I teach people about Jamaican roots, deep into the roots. So that's what I do as well. And uh, I feel like personally, that's my, that's my part of giving back to the culture. You know, not just doing the music and the hype and whatever, you know, taking that time to really show people like everything about Jamaica. And if you watch my YouTube channel, you can see I love Jamaica. <laughs> and they, you, you, know, you can see the love for it. And I think there is a difference between you know, I'm in the streets, with Mr. Williams. I'm in the streets. I'm, I'm, I'm fully out. I, I don't think Jamaicans really care about anybody stealing the music. No, no I wouldn't they're, say they, they're, they're they care about. There are voices out there. There are voices out there who say yeah. that. And Jamaicans welcome foreigners. Yes, yes, to, yes. to our music, to yeah, our space, to our, to our island. Music, my friend, has no boundary. No. Because those who consume it, I always say, will always. Perform it. If your music is truly loved and embraced by any race, any culture, right. they will also perform it. And I think people like to see me in the streets as well. So they say, so the, you, the, the man I do the music, but you see him love Jamaica. And he's, I think that's the only point of like, you know, one, Jamaica is a small country. Yes. And from what I've learned, they're very proud people. So for me now, anytime I've come across anybody from a Jamaican background, they embrace me because mm -hmm. they love that I'm, what I'm doing yes. and they just love it. Yeah. You know, but I think there is a point of certain bands or artists that are out there that are doing reggae music and they're not really in the culture. Mm -hmm. yes. You have to be in the culture. You have to be here. Yes. You have to be on the streets. You have to be in the parties. You have to make the, the normal people on the side of the road see you and say, that, you know what I you there? That, that's it. I'm see him and we, and we, and we talk to him and then rape me. And so I think, I think there's a point, you know, I don't know too much about them, but the, the, the band that won the Grammy Award. award so, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know too much about them. I can't talk if you don't know nothing about are they here in Jamaica? Are they in the streets? Are they in the garrisons? I don't think you are. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem. I think that's where the problem lies. Because, mm -hmm. you know, 
you have to be in them places there to show, you got to show, I want this, this dance hall music, reggae dance hall music comes from the garrison. I learned this, I'm in English. I learned that, I know that this comes from ghetto people, mm -hmm. poor people, you know? So you have to their own them and make them embrace you before you can start. Because when I'm in England, although I know I've got a lot of white fans and a lot of other race fans, I know if I, go, if, if I reach to a, a predominantly black community, I know I'm going to get recognised straight away. Yes. I know that. Anyway, there's black people, I'm going to get recognised. Mm -hmm. I know my market and I know what type of white people listen to my music yes. and what type of, you know, not obviously as a whole, but you know, like, as you could, just, if, you, if you had to narrow it down. That's what interests me about the band. What is their market? Who is their market? <laughs> is it white people? Is it black people? Is it mixed? It's mixed, is it... it's mixed mostly with, with um, uh, Latin, um, Hispanics, oh, and whites. Okay. So mostly. Do people in Jamaica listen to them? No, I don't, I don't think they're very popular here. That's a and problem. It's, that's, it's, that's, 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 it's that the would music. Be a for me. It's, they're not very popular. In, they came here and performed at Jazz and Blues right. in Jamaica. Right. And they get fairly good, a good reception. Right. Because, so, as I said to you, Jamaicans will welcome it anyone. Of course. But if you have a bad tune, regardless of your race, Jamaicans will totally yeah, embrace man. it. Yeah, man, the truth. Like, the truth. I mean, I mean, there are groups like um, UB40. Yeah, big right? up UB40. UB40 is a, is a group that Foundation, Jamaicans, yeah, Jamaicans yeah. embrace. A, a lot of Jamaicans will be, will be I, I mean, dancing to the record and embrace. I know, when you know say, that they're white. But when you say UB40, do people listen to UB40 in Jamaica? Yes, they do. Of course they do. They, this UB40 is the difference that I'm trying to make. It's played Mr. Williams, in this Jamaica. This is the point I'm trying to make. Yes. Do people listen to No, them? your question, you know, about Soja and whether they Do have fans in Jamaica. Do people listen to my music in Jamaica? Yes. Right. So yeah. Soja's music in Jamaica, because of the, the sound of it, is not in keeping with what Jamaicans Popular. consume. Popular, right. So, but, but Jamaicans are not against them for, for, for reggae. Ever had any bad This group from, from Canada that did this rude. Ah, yeah, right. That record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That record is a big record in big Jamaica. Big like that song never... <laughs> yeah, that yeah. song boss big in Jamaica. Really? That's what I'm saying. That's a white group. Right. Magic, the group Magic, yes. So, so, so I'm saying, this Jamaica is not into this racist, anti this, anti no, nothing. I've never, I've if never, you I've drop never. a record, Bridging, regardless of your race, Jamaicans are going yeah, to rock it, to bad. it. It's a tough audience, Jamaica. Right. <laughs> They're tough, <laughs> yeah? So when they embrace you, you you're good, Bridget. Yeah, my friend. Really. Period. Really. There's nothing more to it than that. 100%. You drop them a good record and they're, they're on to you. Music. You know what I mean? And music, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen it Like all I said, I can only talk personally and, I, and I've only ever been embraced, and especially when I'm in Jamaica. Yes. It's even more of a love and embrace. Yeah, man. Me and Jamaica have a good relationship. That's right. I love Jamaica. And Jamaica loves me. Okay. That is it. Good for you. <laughs> so where are you taking this? I yo, to the, to, to, to the sky and beyond, Mr. Williams. So um, I think, you know, at the moment, I think what I need next is, uh, you know, I've got hit songs. Mm -hmm. I've got hit songs, which we go out on the road and people know the lyrics for. So I think, uh, you know, um, but really just really hit the mainstream with yes. this sound that I've got. And... Uh, you know, just bring through my, my group, because so, my manager is, uh, is YGP. That's my manager, and he's based from Kingston. Uh, and there's a group of us as well, um, artists, Izel, Falco, The General, uh, Jarge P, and there's a, there's a good few, you know, artists in the link, and we're all a one team. All right, so you're going to do a little performance for us, right? Yes, sir. A little freestyle right here on our stage. That right? is it. So I'm going to take where all of this and right. this is stage Bridgwick. Ah, Bless up for that performer. See? White. On stage, Mr. Crazy. Williams, this is where we change up the accent. <laughs> yeah, breezy music. Big up yourself, one YGP. Hear that? Spanglers, Love Lane, Matches Lane, Grand Spin, United Tinger, UK in the building. Watching the man? Yo, Redam. The boy can't take man for Alan, I know Nick Cannon We drop bombs like Saddam, the boy there The boy there's a man Talk shot from the cannon Rodham, Rodham Bad man like Adams, big 4-5 and knock you off balance 
I don't do banter, not any girl can't take man for Santa. Kick a man down like Blanca, when they run there, yo, that's where they find. Do psycho money, you're straight from Atlanta. We stack money like a banker. You know when the man there is, tell the whole house how you would smell like. Just look at that, no girl can't take man for Google back. Then my bad mind me to you. I got a white number one, do good at. Fully done, tell me don't rebook in that. 2023, there no looking back. Me love it with the girl in art. I mean, love it with the girl in sitting back. Brand new Ralphie, you're not killer, you're not bounty. Will it for lyrics, lines that county? We have the link, the link, you can shout me. Nothing them doubt me, blaze up the fire, no, they can't out eat. Nothing them move slouchy, burn to preach them, and they can't shout me. Cycle like Bonnie, you want feature, but run money. You're not a gangster, you're just funny. Yo, you don't know the things that man on stage big up yourself, man. M the I in the building. That is it. Why you